Twas the night before Frosty Faustings, my next major tournament, when all through the servers not a gamer was stirring. So like a reasonable adult, I set my alarm to go to the airport two hours early the following day to make sure nothing goes wrong. I rushed to the airport. I bolted through every public space I possibly could, and somehow even though I overslept my alarm by an entire hour and a half, I make it to my gate at the airport with literally 10 seconds to spare. Not only did I somehow avoid getting punished, but in an incredible extra helping of luck, I somehow upgraded to first class? Got a good feeling about this weekend now, and if you're looking forward to seeing more of this continuing journey as a Street Fighter player, consider hitting that subscribe button as I watch my plane take off. Frosty Faustings is an extremely well-established FGC major that's been around for a long time and has been home to countless legendary moments. It originally started out as mostly an event focused on anime fighting games like Melty Blood and Grand Blue, but has since evolved to embracing the entirety of the fighting game spectrum, with more traditional fighters like Street Fighter King of Fighters, platform fighters like Smash Bros, tag team games like Marvel 3 and Dragon Ball Fighters, you name it. It's a must-attend event for anyone who loves fighting games. Despite how long I've been traveling and competing, this is my first time flying out to an event for Street Fighter, so making this my second pit stop in my journey to the top of the Street Fighter world was an easy choice. Unfortunately for me though, my pool wasn't starting until 8pm, so I just took it easy, made sure to practice where I could, the time finally came for me to play after a leisurely day of watching everyone else play their pools. My first opponent this weekend is Chicago native Aquanite, a JP player. Usually when JP players are going to open up the OD portal, it means they're going to want to throw out a lot of projectiles, which the best way for me to usually deal with that is just to just hang back, try and find the little openings when I can, and just drive rush through them, because you can actually do that pretty effectively against JP. If you're fast enough, which J DJ is, got that corner pressure, get the grab, fairly clean round one. Once I got in, for the most part, I was able to stay in, and that was enough to take the round. Yep, we run the projectiles again. Really good timing on the uh, on the first one though. Yeah, it, that's a really strong end here if you can make it work. Ah, I missed the uh, cr crouching mini punch confirm there, but it's fine. Yep, just keep moving forward, keep getting in. Once I get a bit of a read on their timing for that, it's over. Yep, now it's just a uh, clean the combo. I dropped it though. That's weird. Yeah, I think in that moment. I must have messed up my input for the level 3, but it's fine. Yep, drive rush in, go through the immediate projectiles. They did the last two times to start, so I thought they'd do it again. Just drive rush through this time. Yep, didn't overcommit to there, so I was able to react to DI. This into level 1. I might have been able to kill if I converted instead into heavy up kicks, but I didn't want to take the risk of it failing, so it's good to just be safe with level 1. I went for the same drive rush read again, but I guess they timed a little bit differently so they were able to beat me that time. Good on them. Good amnesia on wake up. I was getting a little too comfortable, I think. Because of the lead I had, I started to think that I was a little more infallible than I actually was. Yeah. Back heavy kick is super easy to cancel into DI though, so that makes it easy. And I offer the level 1 here to just force burnout. I could have gone for something else, but it's often good to just play it real safe. You don't need to do anything fancy, just throw out your projectiles, force burnout. First set out of the way. Feel like I played pretty well overall. Just gotta stay focused and prepare for the second set of the bracket. My next opponent is gonna be C. Chavez, another Chicago native, but a Luke player instead of a JP this time. His jump ends are quite scary, but I win the fireball worn out range him, so just need to focus on aggressively gaining space and then sniping jumps, and hopefully I'll be good to go. This matchup's a little spooky for me, but I think I'm starting to get better at it. I try to stay patient at the start for most matchups, just to try and get an idea of how people are going to move. In this case, they started playing pretty passively, so I was able to just get some pressure started. Yep, same opening combo twice now. Gotta start varying it up in case I get DI'd through the f double fireballs the next time. But either way, I'm able to open up with a clean perfect on C. Chavez. Good round one start. They were getting kind of predictable with their fireball timing, so I was able to get a nice jump in corner pressure, go for the double fi fake fireball mix-up and the jump. And yeah, you can actually DP people who are going to DRC on your block fairly easily, so a lot of time I'm really willing to go for that if we're around the same overall resources because I know that it's a really good trade. There's a lot of value in forcing those kinds of trades because they have to burn 3 drive and you only have to burn 2 to do that, so it's generally pretty worth it. Get the cancel into the fireballs or try and whittle down their gauge more. They burn themselves out, which at that point I decide I'm just going to play really patiently, not really take any risks, be willing to take the throw there, and just 
focus on cutting off that forward movement. Game one, in the bag. Yep, no need to take any extra risks, just focus on push pressing forward, focus on just slowly but surely whittling them away. I was pressing on their block and they read a DP. Good on them. Yeah, I don't see enough people use drive reversal in general. It's super, super good against people who are just gonna press forward like that. Heavy Fireball is, it's plus on hit by a little bit, so you can use it to get extra kind of pressure like that, or go for grabs if you think they're not gonna be ready. Round one, game two in the bag. Things are going pretty cleanly so far. I was getting a little too, uh, a little too comfortable swaying there. They were gonna Fireball me for my troubles. Yep, go for the side switch here. You could go for more damage, by doing a more traditional combo, but then you lose out on side switch, and I think ultimately pushing people in the corner is more valuable than anything else. This should be game. Yep, no need to do anything fancy, just get the punish counter or standing heavy kick, get the full conversion. One match away from winning my pool in a Street Fighter Major for the first time. Felt like I controlled grounded space really effectively versus C. Chavez. The last player I must do battle with in my pool is Goji. I know absolutely nothing about Goji going into this. Have to be particularly on point in matchups like this, or everything I've worked for can evaporate in an instant. Yeah. Starting off really patient, just trying not to take any unnecessary risks. But, fun fact, Crouching Medium Punch registers as a low when you're fighting against Marisa, so Crouching Medium Punch can actually beat through Gladius and also Superman Punch, which is why you're seeing me use it there. In, in situations where you expect them to like hold Gladius, you can just crouch a medium punch through it. And then if you think they're going to go for immediate Gladius, you can just try and parry. Or just block if you have to. Or I guess you can also like level 3 as well if you've got that available, which I didn't. So, yep, great parry on them. Force me in the corner. I read there that they're going to wait a little on their press though, so that's why I was able to get the jabs. Good pressure. Just trying to push my way in. I went for the cross up on that aerial, but they were ready for it. <sighs> Slight miss facing on standing heavy kick. Yeah, push them back. Read the low. That should be it, but I dropped the level three. Unfortunate drop for me that the uh, Sobot into level three is a true combo and I definitely could have closed the round, but I still closed it anyway, just with a little spaghetti. It's fine, it's fine, tournament nerves. React to Superman Punch with DI, but I mess up the crouching medium punch part and I just completely blunder that. Uh-oh. They've got me in the corner. I decided to just DP back though, just try and make them represent try and force them to respect that possibility early on. Yeah. You can see that I, I got countered because I was trying to crouch a medium punch there, but sometimes you can get like a little too comfortable with it and you just end up exploding for it. You have to go for the block string. I try to press on their wake up further though when they're in burnout. They're just gonna armor through fireballs. Take round one. Oh boy. First round I've lost this tournament. It's a little spooky. Should be fine though. I've still got a super advantage. Uh oh. More big damage. Oh! Yeah, I've taken about half my life. I'm in the corner. This is bad. Really good jump in read from them. They're gonna fully burn out. I don't think they can kill yet, but I'm one hit away at this point. What do I do? I'm just gonna get out with fireballs. Didn't quite work. At least I'm recovering some of my gauge, and I'm just trying to force a jump so I can either just anti-air with up kicks or just catch them with something else and try and force them into the corner. Yeah, really good check from them. And we're in game three. Oh boy. I make it into phase two pools no matter what, but this determines whether I make it through winners or losers. This is a big deal. At this point, I'm starting to feel pretty nervous, not gonna lie. Alright, going through there. Just hit, be patient. Good spacing against Gladius, standing heavy kick. Standing heavy kick is a godsend if they're gonna do those, like, charge Gladiuses from a distance. Yep, go for safe corner pressure. I was hoping for the grab, but they were just ready for it at that point. If I can get like one really beefy combo starter, I think I win here. Yeah, this should be the game. Just gotta not mess up. And I do. Shit. Whew. Okay. Everything went well. Things go well on the reset with a knee shot into grab. So I'm able to take the round, but still way too close for comfort.
yeah, I misread their movement, but at least there I was able to get a parry anyway, so I didn't get punished too hard by Gladius. Yep, go for extra damage instead of better Oki. Get standing heavy kick. I can't, I knew I couldn't kill there, so I just decided to just focus on that. And with that, I win my pool for the first time at a Street Fighter Major. Hell yeah! So Fatality, how'd your pools go? Uh, pretty good. I uh, won my pool solidly at Frosty Fastings. I had to I had to play a pretty solid Marisa at the end, who gave me a little spook, but thankfully I was able to take game three fairly solidly. There was a lot of spaghetti towards the end, especially in game two and three from both of us, but I'm glad the scrambles worked out in my favor. Won three matches, had a bye. So tomorrow I gotta play just a kid who it's gonna be tricky for sure. He's one of the best juries in the world. But I know DJ's his least favorite character in the game to play against. And I think that match was pretty good for me, all things considered. And on top of that, I'm gonna study his set versus Jin in the recent Capcom Pro Tour qualifier. So I think I'm gonna have, at least for this set, an information advantage that he won't have. And maybe I can make the upset. After that, I honestly have a pretty decent path to try and make it far into winter. So hopefully that can work out. And that's tomorrow at noon. So yeah, hopefully it goes well. But before we get to the next day, I'd like to give thanks to today's sponsor, Junk Food Arcades. Junk Food Arcades is a fantastic brand that makes mostly leverless arcade-styled controllers to be used in fighting games and really whatever you fancy. The most popular of their products is definitely the Snackbox Micro, which just so happens to also be my favorite controller when playing Street Fighter. Leverless in this context just means that it's all buttons and no control sticks or arcade joystick, which has some pretty neat benefits, since playing like that is better for your hands long term and lets you control micro movements just a little bit easier in general. And since I play DJ, it's great for charge characters too. If you buy their controllers, you can even customize personal art for the front, different button trigger sensitivities, and even the sounds they make when pressed. They've also got different scaled models like the XL. Overall, it's easily one of the best options money can buy if you're trying to get into fighting games, or even just want to try something else. I can't recommend it enough. Thank you again to Junk Food Arcades for sponsoring this video, and on to the next day of Bracket. Just a Kid is a pro player with Moist Esports from Wisconsin that's one of the best jury players in the world. Hopefully I can catch him off guard, as some of the players ahead of this match in Bracket I had practiced with earlier in the week and did quite well. If I can just clutch this out, I have a good chance of making it all the way to winner's quarters. Time to lock in. Alright, time to scope him out and see what he's going to do. So he's going to start out with just patient walking. I think he's hoping that I'll just overcommit and to check a drive rush, but I decide not to give it to him. Unfortunately I messed up on the projectile, but I'm still able to get the DP so it all works out. Have the corner. Yeah, I go for that to try and bait out an early DP. A lot of times stronger players will use DP earlier on rather than something later because they want to establish a fear of DP so that you'll be more likely to just hesitate and just be more likely to just not overextend so they can have more breathing room. Because a lot of the time they're more confident they'll win neutral more often than you. So if they can just encourage you to play less risky, then they're confident they can just beat you at their own game. He gets me in the corner, but I've only got one more hit now. Read the parry. And that's round one. Things are starting out pretty well for me, all things considered. Yeah. This time though, he read that I wouldn't go for the grab again. Parry, smart. Now I'm in the corner, which sucks, but it's fine. I'm able to get a little bit of space for myself, but unfortunately I just get backed in again. I need to start developing a better habit of just committing a little less in the corner and just be more willing to just like move forward a little bit, gain some space, and then just not give it up. It's okay to just move forward and hold down back. I need to be more willing to do that in just a larger variety of positions in general. Yeah, nice with punish. Nice cancel into grab. I feared extra pressure though, so just force that out. Get the corner. Just tried to apply safe pressure, just trying to buy myself a little time to restore my drive gauge a little. Level 3 conversion, this is rough, but as long as I don't get hit by a big combo, I can still survive. And I was able to avoid it at first, but I didn't think that he was going to continue applying pressure, and I was going to try and take my turn back, but nah, he continued to apply more pressure, I got clipped, and he died, and I died for it. Either way, game one to just a kid. It wasn't too bad, though. If things had gone just a little bit differently, I could have absolutely won that game. Yeah, DP's in the corner have been going really well for me so far, but I have to be careful with those, because if he's ready, just in general, then obviously... Using me able to get absolutely massive punishes. Had to be a little more sparing with that. 
I think that's one of my habits just in general is I have a little too much confidence in my own DPs. I am good at placing them, but I think I need to just use them a little bit less in general. I get the block. Apply some pressure. Nice trade. Yeah, the uh, standing medium kick trade there was really good for me. I was able to get a decent conversion. Right now we're about tied in drive gauge over... Well, not drive gauge, but uh, supers. Drive gauge is about the same until I get that grab. Get a nice little advantage. Yeah, the little uh, shimmy that's built into that is so good if you can get it. And there we go. We tie up the rounds. I have a real shot at taking this game too. Going into this, starting to feel a little nervous, but... I go for a pretty big read there. I thought he was going to go for a low projectile and I was going to jump over it using OD Sobot, but I misread the situation. At least it's still fairly safe even if you do get that. Yep, I read the parry this time. Go for Sway. I'm not able to land the hit, but at the least I'm able to just apply more pressure, get some damage, and just slowly but surely whittle that drive gauge down a little bit more. I'm like one more good guess away at this point. Excellent defense by just a kid though. But I catch him on a little uh, unprepared for that and on that note, I land the level three and we find ourselves in a game three. This is my chance. If I can just play well for one more game, I could make what is easily my biggest upset in, uh, in an offline tournament yet, easily. I could beat one of the best juries in the world. I can do this. Yep, I expect him to walk forward just a little bit to start, so I open up with Sobot, but he backs off. Thankfully, I don't get whiff punished, though. Yep, excellent check on the drive rush this time. I think because, because I felt so close, I started to be like a little antsy. I needed to calm down just a little bit. Go back to the patient game that got me so far in the first place. Cause it's not a big deficit yet. Yep, good DP call out. Now I can start applying some pressure. Nice. Really smart jump boy from just a kid though. I have the corner. Big opportunity, but great read by him. Get the parry, apply some damage and pressure of his own. It's fairly evenish so far. I was able to avoid a good amount of that pressure. Yep. He's in burnout though, so I want to get a little bit closer. I catch his dash in though. This is huge. Yeah, I didn't read his dash in. I just was going to go for some pressure. And once I realized he dashed in, I just reacted and went for a full combo and it all worked out. One round away. This is super doable. Just stay patient. Don't overextend. I can do this. Yeah, I think because he saw the distance I was drive rushing at, he read I was going to be going for a sweep there, which, that's smart. Remember when I was talking earlier about how I need to be a little more careful with my DPs? Yeah, just kid was ready this time, and... Oh, that's rough. But it's fine, it's fine. I still have a level 3 advantage going into round 3, so... On paper, this still statistically favors me. I just need to play well. Ah, oh, nice read. Yeah, nice read on the crouching medium kick conversion. Now I'm in the corner. I go for the parry. Didn't work out. I'm able to escape with this DP, but at this point my resources are pretty low, both in life and in drive gauge, so I just have to be really careful. Yep, he reads the reads that with a jump. Yep, I read more pressure with the DP, but at this point I can't afford to do another one, and at least his resources are pretty low too, so I can kind of afford to play a little more patiently but he reads my dash in and and on that note things unfortunately fell apart for me in the final round but honestly a super close set either way nothing I can do now but move forward and try going on a loser's bracket rampage surprisingly I get summoned for the stream man what's homie's name right here he, this I, is he plays smash is, as well right this is fatality, Does fatality. Play smash. which actually makes this the first time I've ever been on a stream for a street fighter major Gonna do my best to play well for the people. Next foe I must duel is Johnny N, an e Honda player from Illinois. I used to be absolute shit at this match, I'm not gonna lie. There's this feature in Street Fighter 6 where you can watch other people's matches online since everyone playing ranked is on a public server, so learning from whoever you like through studying is a breeze. It also sometimes recommends you sets of similarly skilled players beating matchups you struggle in, and for a time, my entire tab was nothing 
but e hondas sometimes i still hear dos goy in my nightmares yeah it's good to just start with fireball pressure since fireball is going to beat out a lot of his approaches it's a way of kind of just forcing him to slow down from all the headbutt nonsense and hopefully i can use that to try and not just slow him down enough to where I can really get a read on his movements, but try and find my openings that way too. It's kind of hard to approach him effectively though, so I kind of just have to play ultra defensively and just kind of camp him out, honestly. Yeah, get my conversion there. Nice Oki okay off of the uh, up kicks. Maximum conversion in the corner. If I Do I get the read? No. Go for the knee shot. Unfortunately though, crouching medium kick misses there. I could have comboed that into up kicks, but I didn't have the presence of mind in the moment. Didn't react fast enough. That's on me. Either way, Johnny starts applying some really good pressure and thankfully he misses with butt slam, which gives me an opportunity. Stun in the corner. I know I can't kill here, so I don't even bother trying. Just get some damage. I actually tried level threeing there, but it didn't come out for some reason. I think I messed up the input slightly. Although I get the shimmy on the corner attempt, which forces Game one, and things are looking pretty solid for me, all things considered. Back to applying the usual fireball pressure and trying to get parries on headbutts. He gets a really good read and intercepts my drive rush though and puts me in the corner. Yeah, I try mixing up with the uh, fake fireball, but he doesn't bite, which is good. Yeah, I try approaching a little bit, a little too early, catches me with that. But I get an anti-air now from here, get a big combo, or I could have, but I don't think I had full confidence in the uh, crouching medium punch there, so I didn't have the confidence to convert that into a combo when I could have. No need to take any big risks, just get the corner pressure, DI in the corner, so I'll take it. Finally get a parry on one of those. Oh, I'm, I messed up the heavy machine gun upper, that's crazy. I also messed up the combo there, unfortunately. There was a lot of spaghetti in this set, but it's fine. I've got enough of a lead at this point. As long as I avoid getting burned out, I should be fine. He starts applying pressure. And I messed up the first time. I reacted a little slow on that one combo, but I'm able to take the match against Johnny N and progress further in Loser's Phase 2. So from here, I know that if I win one more set, I'll be in top 48. Let's do this. I end up playing a tad sloppy in my advantage state in combos, but hold it down to neutral well enough to avoid stressing too much. Which brings us to yet another set I played on stream, this time as a phase three and top 48 qualifier. If I win this, I'll be guaranteed 33rd at worst, which is the same placement I got at DreamHack, but this would be at a much bigger event, so still good progress if I can secure a win here. My obstacle to top 48 is follow your dreams, a Zangief player from Illinois. This matchup is spooky, but I mainly just need to focus on keeping Geef out and then occasionally getting drive rush pressure in and once I get him in the corner, he just struggles, so I need to make sure that I can capitalize on this when I get it. I got the spot, I can start pressing forward, but I give up a little space because I'm not really sure if he's going to try and SBD me there or not. Nice conversion from Follow Your Dreams at that point. I can apply some corner pressure myself, and he's relatively close to burnout too, so if I can just apply more pressure, oh yeah, I can DI it here. Yep. And that'll be uh, round one, as long as I don't drop this. And round one is secured. Yep, I get the approach here. I'm trying to bank on him not being ready with Lariat, which it worked out for me that time. Yep, up kicks on the jump. Go for the safe jump to fake landing pressure. He bites and I'm able to get more. But I'm still just barely in grab range. Oh no. But he's not ready for the drive rush, so now we just reversal the situation yet again. Good news for me. Yep, I go for the standing heavy kick there, because if I land a if I land a punish counter there, then I would definitely just win the set at that point. I just need one more good conversion. Anything that'll convert into level 3 and I'll be good. I could have done that, but because you can cancel that into a level 3, which I get the level 3 cancel on fireballs this time, reacting in time. So, game 1, taken for me. At this point, I am one game away from making top 48 out of nearly 800 players at Frosty Faustings. This is big but I gotta hold it together. Yep, I'm just a little slow on the anti-air there. He gets one of his own, and at this point I'm kind of on the back foot, but I get a little conversion here, and two guesses in a row, three guesses in a row. 
I just go for a standing heavy, standing medium punch there because it's just super plus. He gets a nice conversion to push me away. Back to footsies. But I get a really nice whiff punish there. Force the corner. And at this point, he's really close to burnout too, so I can just apply a little more pressure than usual, and that'll do it. Yeah, once I got the sway low conversion and I knew I could combo out of it, it was over. One more round. And top 48 will be mine. Yep, get some parries on the pressure. He hasn't really been doing... He hasn't been, like, canceling his jabs into grabs. So... Or not canceling them into grabs, but, like, stopping them and then grabbing me. So I've just started parrying a lot more as an adaptation to that. He's gonna have to start SPDing more to force me to respect that. Nice crosscut lariat, though. I'm a little bit behind in this round, but... I can bring this back. Nice. Yeah, I don't want to level 3 just yet. I might level 3 on the next conversion, though. Yep, that should be it. Just make sure the level 3 cancel comes out. And that's it. Top 48 clinched. Whew. I made it to phase 3. But I couldn't help but want more. It's not enough to just tie my best placement yet at a much larger event. I want to shatter my previous best and make a statement for myself. Here goes nothing. My first match in Top 48 was against the Nom 7. A kin player from Illinois with some strong success in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, having made top 8 in majors like Defend the North, CEO, and more. So going into this, I knew this was likely going to be a hard fight. As usual, I like to start things off relatively slow to just try and just feel them out a little bit, see how they're going to try and go for pressure. Now for the most part, jumping a little more than I expected. And he's got the corner. But I'm able to get out and at this point start some of my own pressure. Alright, what's the guess? Decide to just play it safe, just see if they're gonna overcommit somewhere. And he doesn't. Wise. Really good reaction on the Shoryu. And I decided to just keep him pinned in the corner of DP, especially since he's close to being burned out as well. Round one's looking good. I'm not sure why the camera lost focus there for a second, but weird. Might be because I'm partly in the frame. Either way, with a good read on the low conversion, <sighs> I lose round one. But, I'm ready for the fireball there. Immediate level two. I feel like I'm one of the more confident DJs in just going for like, seemingly random level twos in spots like that. It's so good if you're confident in your reads. And I feel like you have to be to, to succeed with to some extent, so. Yep, good Dragon Lash. Nom gets pressure. You get the low there. Fireball to apply pressure. Put him in the corner. Get the read on the shimmy. This should convert. Yes. I was slightly worried I was going to drop that, but all's well that ends well, right? Yeah, probably should have drive reversal there, but I hesitated in the moment. Yep, he gets the jump in. Sadly, I just barely missed the punish counter, so I'm not able to get a big conversion, but still apply some decent pressure, but then I missed that! I just slightly mistimed my anti-air and forfeited a lot of stage control, but I get the punish counter there. Get good Oki on up kicks. Get the shimmy. I drop my combo. Oh no. But he decides not to go for level 3, I guess deciding to wanted to save that for a little bit later. Bold decision. And it pays out for him. Oh boy. Okay, so... From here, he doesn't have Drive Rush, so I don't have to worry about maximum plus frames. Still have to be safe though, and I throw out that jab to just discourage some things. If I can just get a level 3 conversion... Uh oh. He gets his full resources back, only needs one more read. Whew, just barely clipped the start of that. Oh, this is tense! Yep, I go for that there, it doesn't quite pan out. I've still got my super too, so if I can get a read with level 2, I've got it. Whew. Extremely close, game 1. Yeah, I go for the drive reversal, but they were ready for it this time. Nom 7 gets good control. Although they have low drive gauge, so I have a chance of burning them out. Yep, get the side switch. I was gonna try and burn them out on wake up, but they were smart to just DP there. Deny that. Yep, 
I didn't react in time to landing the standing medium punch, so I just forfeit the conversion. You get punished for it. At this point, though, I've just I've got burnout, or I did have him in burnout. And then the moment I he gets out, he immediately takes advantage of it, takes round one. Good for the nom seven. Yeah, start off with the fireball again. I didn't have level two this time though, and I didn't think they were gonna do it again. Pretty audacious of them to just do it anyway. But sometimes it just works out. All right, big conversion there. Go for the light kick pressure. Just one fireball, because I don't want to risk getting jumped in on too much. Wow, that, that, was such a, that was such good spacing there with that crouching medium kick. I thought that uh, sway high was going to be good pressure there, but they were just ready. Very good pressure. Thankfully, I was in, I was in block stun, though, so, or a hit stun, so I couldn't be comboed into the wall there. Oh, if I reacted just a little bit faster, I could have converted that into a super. Didn't quite pan out, but also all that ends well. Yeah, I think uh, my movement is what sometimes go causes the camera to go out of focus. Because I'm slightly in the frame. Either way, I'm able to force round three with a level three conversion, so... <sighs> one game away. One round. If I can clinch this, I'll make it further in top 48 and not have to worry about anything else. At least until my next match, anyway. Big conversion. I have full corner pressure. What's the mix-up? This should be it. And the run continues. Officially in top 32 now. Despite my win, there's little time to relax before I have to play my next match against Maki, a strong Ken player from Mexico, and this time using modern controls. So modern Ken, I gotta be a little more careful and on point with my reactions and focus more on just baiting out his own reactions as well. Either way, get some good pressure, get the throw. Smart low move forward. Uh, I was just a little slow on my anti-air, so he's able to get in and force the situation around. In the corner, have to worry about throw loops. And they're ready. At this point, uh-oh. Another grab. I'm a little slow to react to DI, and at that point, Maki takes round one. Just gotta hold it together. I'm able to get the shimmy, but couldn't really do much with it. All right, get another grab. That was so smart. If I went for my regular anti-air, I would have missed there because up kicks would have just gone into the corner and then I would have gotten punished. So even though I was a little slow on the trigger, it actually ended up working out for me. More damage. If they can get one more big combo, I'm dead. And they messed up the punish. Suddenly I get a second lease on life. Huge opportunity for me. Yep, I fake the grab, get the shimmy, and all of a sudden things are close again. That should have been game one. I'm still in this. Yep, block that. I wasn't ready for the uh, low forward there at the end though. And here, time to try and force a burnout. I went for that fake fireball there to try and bait on a quick super, but they didn't bite. Either way, I've got burnout this time and Ah, uh, I didn't respect the potential instant level three. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of playing modern, those instant supers. I should have respected it, and I didn't. I tried forcing a stun in the corner too, but I wasn't able to get it. That was probably, that was, I think that was a bad conversion there, but super good reaction from them, forcing me out of the corner. At this point, I just survived just a little bit long before I can get my resources back. Yep, I, I tried challenging and checking the Dragon Lash, but I was just a hair slow on the trigger. I ended up getting counter hit for it and die. Game one, Maki. That's fine though, I can still do this. Just gotta hold it together. Yep. Get the read on their offensive option. Able to convert myself. Big damage here. All I need to do is not choke the combo. Excellent start to game two. Whew. Whew. All right, one more round. One more round and I can tie this up. Parry on the fireball. 
Oh, I, I misread their grounded option and I get jumped over. Try rush pressure. They're smart and they're ready for the tight grab though. My driver reversals have not been working against them. I think maybe if I maybe if I do it a little bit faster, but I'm trying to catch specifically their second option, which is why maybe it's not working. I should probably just be DPing there instead, honestly. Yep. At that point, they're in burnout. They can't really get out without committing to a super. And I read they don't want to, and I just kill them for it. They're probably expecting DI, and I just refuse to give it to them. Take a moment to breathe. Think about this. I can do this. I can make top 24. Just one more game. Two more rounds. That was too close for comfort in game one, but thankfully I made the adaptations I needed to and won game three relatively cleanly. Now in top 24. Next match would be against Eli the Curry, a longtime FGC veteran with many top eights under his belt for both Street Fighter V and VI, and an amazing kin player in his own right, hailing from California. I knew going into this I was an underdog. If I can win this, I really like what the rest of my bracket looks like. I think I can make a path to top eight. I think I can do this. But I have to just get through this one more obstacle first. Then I'll be in top 16 too. Good punch was just cool. Get good Oki. Jab into grab. <sighs> At least I still have him in the corner. Just got to keep him there. Yep, that should be it. Just don't drop the combo. All right, we're in there. Round one against Eli the Curry. Let's go. Good burst from them, but oh, I didn't react in time. If I reacted just a little bit faster, I couldn't convert it off that crouching medium punch, but it's okay. I still get an opening. Get some damage. Smart OD fireball from them, but here we go. Big pressure, big damage. Yep, I could have added a little more damage, but I didn't want to burn myself out. Decided to save some of my resources for a little less damage. If I just get one more good read, I'll have game one in the bag. Smart throw attack from Eli. And I get the Sobot to take game one against Eli. If I can take just one more game, I'll be in top 16. All right, get the Sway. Good, get some good Oki in the corner. But he was ready. Yeah, that was such a good wait on him. Yep, not able to meaningfully convert. Oh, just barely, just barely too far away to get the combo extension. Oh, that would have been huge. That's okay, though. I've still got a damage lead. Still got him in the corner. No need to force anything. Keep it simple. As I say that, I slightly extend there, and he reads it with level one. Oh, I messed up. But it's okay. Big damage. And I get the standing medium kick. One round away from top 16. Come on. He's got to play solid. Really good anti-air. Really good grab. Now I'm in the corner myself. I get the whiff punish, but I'm not really ready for it. So I don't really convert off of it, sadly. Yep. Good read on the jump. You like it's a big opening. I'm in the corner. All right. I DP this time, though, so all's fine. I'm able to get the cross up, but I, d I guess I didn't expect it to convert, so I wasn't ready for a Sobot conversion. <sighs> yeah, that should be it for this game. He was burned out himself though, so he was kind of limited in what he could do, but I've got the level three advantage going into round three. 
I just need to play solid, and I've got this. I do this. Great drive rush check. Eli's got the corner. DP out. I can't really gain much more space though, but at least I'm able to force myself out of the corner by drive rushing through the jump. Good parry. Just trying to slowly but surely get my way in. This should be level three. I decided instead to go with that. Oh, that, sh that forced me into the corner off of my uh, knee aerial was so good. I pushed when I shouldn't have. I got antsy! I got antsy when I shouldn't have. Eli takes full advantage and takes the game. Ah, yeah, that was really good though. That's okay, hold it together. I can still do this. I can still make my way into top 16. Solid conversion to start. More damage. More damage, about halfway through. 60% through. Just don't drop this combo. I need one more conversion. Perfect. One round away again. Just gotta clutch this out. Yeah, I actually had the read on the parry, but I just slightly misspaced it. Unfortunately, because that would have been a huge way to start the series. Yep, he's got the corner. Good punish counter on my whiff. In the corner. Just gotta hold it together. I'm surprised he burned out there, but... Yep, he gets the good overhead. And we're now tied. Game three, round three. This is it. Time to clutch this out. Alright, get a little bit of damage, but it's nothing too crazy. I don't react to getting the lows, so I don't fully convert, unfortunately. Yeah, I got a little antsy. I shouldn't have gone for the second sway. Good on Eli to recognize that. Now I'm in the corner. But I force my way out. These antsy sways are killing me, man, but it's okay. I, sh I should be fine. Wait. I think I'm dead. I, I think that's it. <sighs> Rest in peace. And now I'm out of the tournament. Placing 17th at Frosty Fastings out of 728 entrants and completely decimating my previous result at DreamHack Atlanta. At DreamHack Atlanta, I went 3-2 out of a little over 300 entrants, and here I went 7-2 out of more than 700 players. While I would have liked to go further, it's hard to complain with having such a big glow up. What makes it even better is that both the players I lost to ended up placing top 6 at this stacked event, and both of my losses to them were extremely close. Which is a few different decisions made, I could have conceivably gotten top 8. Not bad for my second Street Fighter Major ever, huh? Congratulations to Punk for winning the whole damn thing in a Game 10 nail-biter against Duel Kevin. That was amazing to watch. And shoutouts to Ramsey for getting third with Geef of all characters, with the support of all of his loyal fans. And thank you for watching! If you'd like to help support more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help a little bit more, consider becoming a YouTube member, which only costs $1 a month. It gets you emotes when I stream since Twitch lets me dual stream now on Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. And I'll also post some exclusive content for members there. Don't expect anything too fancy, but bits and pieces of stuff I record from tournament travels and elsewhere that don't end up fitting in videos will get uploaded just for members as a little bonus. Have a good one!